Let's uh, go back to Peter Matthews and Peter, Florida this week uh, to require people blogging about Governor DeSantis. This is really interesting. This um, they've they've asked people to register. Um, what do you make of all of that? I think it's a very dangerous precedent because if it does go through, because uh, it's a violation of the fight of the First Amendment right to freedom of the press. And what? Who's so bloggers have to register if they get paid by someone else to blog a story about the governor, about the state legislators, or the cabinet? That's a chilling. That'll have a chilling effect on free speech and on freedom of ideas, marketplace of ideas. We all believe in. Believe in democracy. We have to have a wide diversity of ideas put out there without infringement by the government. In this case, the government will be putting suppressing these ideas, and it's not right. So I think that they should hold off. I don't think it'll pass. Let's see. It won't be. It won't be constitutional. If the courts get it, they'll throw it out. President Biden has given his support to a railway safety reform bill after the Ohio derailment. Um, what do you think? Yes, well, it's a long time coming. It's a total tragedy. This even happened when the poor folks down there in Ohio are really suffering with chemical poisoning and all kinds of things in the air, the water, or the soil. Uh, this should never have happened. I mean, we have 1,000 train derailments a year, Tim. That's unbelievable. The United States has to update its rail system needs to move to high-speed rail, good public transportation of, uh, of the goods and services. It's a big transport company, uh, the railroads are, and we have to make sure they're totally safe. And I think the Biden bill is going to help out. The support of that bill is coming up to be signed by him if it will pass with Congress. I think it will be bipartisan support. And it will bring in uh, safer and newer rail cars, the newer braking systems that are outdated right now. The newer systems of braking will be brought in. All of that would help, definitely. Rick Scott has added to his criticism of Mitch McConnell. Do you see him as a future Senate leader? I don't think so, because Rick Scott presided over the debacle of losing the Senate, uh, of not maintaining the Senate or taking it back this time around. Democrats actually gained one seat under Scott's leadership of the uh, the campaign. And besides that, I think that there's too much acrimony between Scott and the other wing of the party led by McConnell, and they're criticizing each other. Uh, I don't think that Scott has enough support because of that. And it's about committee assignments and things like that. He's accusing McConnell of taking him off a committee assignment in revenge for him running as for a minority leader position. Well, that kind of thing doesn't doesn't bode well for public presentations, and I don't think he'll have a chance to uh, to really become a strong leader in that uh, in the Senate at this point. What about some of the foreign policy of the government? Of course, uh, inflation's a problem, interest rates are a problem. Is there bipartisan support in the support of Ukraine? Another four hundred million dollars worth of infrastructure and and weapons heading towards Ukraine from the U.S. It's been a lot of money. I mean, $25 billion already in direct uh, military aid, and then on top of that, more billions in other kinds of humanitarian aid. So there is a concern on the part of one faction, particularly or there's in the party, the Republican Party especially, a, a group of people in the Republican Party who are saying, you know, when is enough of spending enough? And yet the Democrats are pretty solidly behind increasing spending and making sure that Ukraine can win this battle. I think they need to all negotiate, get down to the table, use the China, China's plan for peace and work on that to end this war, because otherwise it will be a bottomless pit. And more and more uh, thousands of Ukrainians will die and other people will suffer around the world with a lack of food, food shortages that are being cut back because of the war. So I think it's time to move forward and try to bring an end to this war, peaceful end and a just end as well. That would be wonderful if that could happen sooner rather than later. Now, now just finally, from, from your angle in politics and you work in it and talk about it every day, uh, do you think that the infighting of, of the Republican Party and the obvious cracks in it uh, just play straight into the Democrats' hands here, uh, heading into 2024? It certainly will give the Democrats an upper hand, but I'd like to see two strong, viable parties, at least in a democracy. Some countries have several parties, but a two-party system that we've had from the beginning of our country's history it has been viable because it's always alternative to uh, one party that's in power can be replaced by another party, at least temporarily, to bring in new policies. That gives voters a choice. And choice is so important in democracy. And clear alternatives that both parties present, clearly uh, alternatives that which they dis differ from each other. That's good for the voters to be able to choose and hold them accountable. We need to have two strong parties, and it's not good to see the Republican Party falling apart like this. It, might, it certainly will help the Democrats win, but it won't be good for American democracy overall. Peter, it is always great to chat. Let's do it again next week. Okay, thank you, Tim.